Yeah. Welcome to the Pillow Talking Podcast. This is your boy JT. And Nini. Bro, this is like our first time in a long time filming at night like we used to back in the gap. In a while. I think we were in the old, the the old apartment, apartment. Yeah. honestly. Yeah. It's been a long time. Actually, we, we could be shooting more at night because we got our kids on a schedule schedule. Right. We don't play that. Sleep. No, Absolutely you want to sleep at 8.30. Period. That's it. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, First off, Dom, how you feeling? 36 weeks? Uh, I'm feeling short of breath. Short of breath, bro. The baby is like, what What she said? Five pounds? Something? Yeah. Four, five, six, I think. I will say this, though. We got the chance to go do a 4D ultrasound. Yeah. I was a little skeptical <laughs> at first. Um, I thought some of the stuff was scammy. And he literally did. The tech y'all. agreed with me, though. Am I lying? Yes, she did. Some of that stuff she so did. So the, the doctor, yes. the tech who was doing the 4D, agreed not that like some it. of the stuff that they are using nowadays is sketchy. It's a little scammy. It's like you you can't, the imaging, like, so basically you have your 2D, mm. which is a regular, you know, black and white. Yeah. 3D is really what we see, like the three dimensional. 4D is when they actually show you, show you the moving, like they make a move mm. live. So. You got people who are taking three dimensional and then adding color, hair, eye color, and like saying, This is what your baby gonna look right. like. And to me, and like even she agreed, it's a little sketch. It's like you're putting filters on a baby in the womb. Like, what are we doing here? Kind of weird. It's a little weird. But more of the story, I was actually I was actually pleasantly surprised <laughs> that I enjoyed it. So I it was good. It was I'm fun. glad um she also said that because we waited to go, it was so much easier to see in um, we the baby. Like it was, uh, we got to see more actually too. Right, like more features. Definitely got to see more features because it was a full baby. Right, so, that was cool. I really enjoyed that. I, I did. It was cool. Uh, it was pretty sweet. Yeah. So I mean, I'm happy. Baby should be here a couple four weeks. Yep, four weeks. Um, yeah, we'll be done. And yeah, somebody will be. We'll be done. Oh, and um <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I saw some today. Um figured found out it actually was false. It was not real. Boy, what? Yeah, this was a, this was they JT. this is from the pandemic. Like this from like twenty twenty. It's not Are you kidding yeah, me? It, so the thing with Jerry Springer, uh guys, it, it started to go viral today. And everybody was like, Jerry Springer is taking, you know, had know illegitimate kids and Ill, Ill, illegitimate black kids, and he gave his whole um, estate over to him when he died, and it, it just was going crazy. Found out the video was actually n- probably not real. It just oh. it's trending again. So anyway, but the conversation that surrounded it was real. That's what I want to talk yeah. about. So if you don't know, basically there's this clip of Jerry Springer with his two <clears throat> daughters from his marriage, Two mm-hmm. white daughters, and then his alleged kids from a you know mistress, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Hey, I ignored you my whole life, so I'm gonna make it right and give you all my whole you know estate, all of my you know earnings, rights. It's going to y'all to make up for Four. me ignoring you." Yeah. Now, even though this particular situation might not be real or whatever. It had people saying, look at Jerry making it right with his kids. (laughs) Look at this guy sticking it to, you know, his ex-wife. Even when, you know. His racist ex-wife. He's showing, and like, it had people defending Jerry, like, me ignoring a kid or a child I created and then just, you know, dying and then leaving them everything is like. That's okay. That, That makes up for the time. It doesn't. And I think it just kind of furthers <laughs> that point that sometimes fatherhood is literally like some some people see it provide. as what you can provide financially. Yeah, like it's like oh, like for example, when we talked about Nick Cannon, mm-hmm. the argument they use always is got he money. got enough money to <laughs> take care of all those kids. Yeah, as if being there. <laughs> Time does not matter. Does not matter oh to the development goodness. of a kid. 
It's crazy. Like, you've been in that situation where your, yeah. your real father, you know, or biological father wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And it was a period, like, you know what it's like to have a period where there is no father present. Yep. I know what it's like to have, you know, my father present but not living there. Like, Having a parent there is a lot different than having a parent that's not there. Now, obviously, that can't be in a perfect world. Everybody would always stay together. Nobody would ever, you know, divorce, break up, separate. But that that happens. But to act as if you can go around like Nick Cannon and just create babies and oh, what we had, like no joke. <laughs> Did he ever reach like 10 or I feel like he did get to double this. I could be wrong, but I feel like it was like, maybe I huh? thought it's 11. Anyway, it's over five. So at <laughs> that point, seven. yeah, it's like, come on. But anyway, the, back to the whole Jerry conversation, a lot of people were saying, you know, look at him, make it right. Look at him do this. And I'm like, look, if this story would have been true, this would have been a, a very, very good example of how selfish people are. Like, like they will avoid having mm -hmm. those tough conversations with, you know, kids or the parents, like to their deathbed. And we see it in real life all the time. We was we was talking the other day yep. about how many, because uh, they people always like to talk about our generation and you know how bad we are, which we are. We <laughs> we a little off, but one thing I do like about our generation is we're less reluctant to keep family secrets. Like back in the day, oh yeah, people secrets would have went on different fathers and different you would wonder why why he looked like such and such, you know what I'm saying? He don't look like and That's they, would, facts. they would die with those secrets. Yeah. Our gender people who came before us, like especially our, our grandparents, grandparents and older, mm -hmm. they would have these family secrets of molestation, cheating, uh illegitimate children. Illegitimate children. And like they would die with it, like that, yeah. Like they would literally die. Like go that. to their deathbed and, knowing that and, they've lied to a kid or a relative about who they really are. Yeah, and think nothing of it. And like, think nothing of. And like to me, if if this story would have been true <clears throat> and Jerry Springer really would have died, had a, you know strange kids and just gave them everything, and people are like, it's make to me that's like, bro, come on, that so money like, is not like, the, like you could buy them. Like, money is not the answer to, you know, an absent father. I'm sorry. It's just not. I I think people think that money is like solves all happiness, all um, feelings of unhappiness or whatever. But like to me, I feel like if you're going through something emotionally, money can never solve that. And like the absence of a father, like what the type of emotional like trauma that you get are you know, issues you get from that, money will can never solve that. Yeah, like you, it it just can never. And we see it, we see it a lot nowadays. Cause you know, even like I, just to bring it back to us, our generation, we make more money. Mm -hmm. I think, I think on average, like we make more money at a earlier part of our lives. You know. Yeah, I agree. We're starting to make money in our 20s, yeah. 30s. So yeah. we're starting to see people have kids and they have a little bit of money. So they like, you know, I take care of my kids. Yeah. And it's like, you do. You provide financially. <laughs> but that ask ain't the enough. kid yeah. how they feel. Are you miss yeah. I, 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 like, I, I, I just... Man, it's like it's really something that you just some I, I don't know. I feel like you can't explain it to people who don't get it. Like, it's just something you just really... Can I explain to them? Like, because you almost feel like you should just automatically feel like money doesn't solve a relationship, like problem, a relational, a relationship problem for a child. Like, yeah, when I has a child ever really cared, cared about or, money? Or fully, even, and I know this for a fact. I, you know, I've been, I've seen kids be around a lot of money and not even. They yeah. can't even yeah. conceptualize mm -hmm. like I'm wealthy. Like it's a right. certain age where they finally realize like they are. Oh, I'm balling, whatever. Yeah. But no, it, I know kids who have, and I'm not talking about like a little bit of money. I'm talking about like you know, especially now with my current job. Like yeah. I'm working with people who own automotive 
groups. Yeah. Like hundreds of dealerships under a group. Mm-hmm. They have hundreds money, of money. millions of dollars. Yeah. And their kids can't tell. I met Drew Brees' kids. Yeah. Um, you know, Drew the Drew Brees kids. His kids act like regular they like they, they just get into the age where like, oh, we got real money. Right. They didn't because I you know, when I met them, they were six, five, like Yeah. They don't they just kids. They're just children. So I bet Drew Brees kids, and we see it with Tom Brady and stuff, their dad is a quarterback, NFL quarterback, and you see them talking about, yeah, my kids be wanting me to come home. Mm. They don't care that their dad is a quarterback. Like, it doesn't matter. They want their dad at home. Yeah. They want to, they hate that their dad is gone so much. Yeah, he's a quarterback. Oh my God, cool. Where, where is that? Yeah. That's all, like, like, I, 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 in speaking of that, I saw, um, post on Facebook the other day and it was like uh, you know parents used to work so much back then you know we would never see them and it was like yeah you worked you worked hard but I never saw you so did that really benefit me as an adult and it didn't that's why I was lucky because my mom had a traditional like a eight to four type job yeah so I like she had a great job and that was uncommon for a black woman to especially know, at the time, yeah. Especially without a college degree, to yeah. be able to have you know and provide so that have I have a, a unique decent, situation. yeah. Like because yeah, you, you I mean you recall you said you remember your mama really working, working. Mm-hmm. like to take so care of y'all like yeah. And I mean coming off Mother's Day, we we just saw yesterday how many people Work. share that story. Like we mm-hmm. their mother worked. And maybe, you know, couldn't be at all the time. And some dads couldn't be there. But the point is, uh, any real father is not going to, you know, abandon their kids into their deathbed and be like, here's everything I worked for. Like, we're good. Like, That's what I'm saying. Like To me, that <laughs> just look like you're trying to buy away your problems. Like, yeah, you still don't want to face the reality yeah. and, and, of a relationship and I think- that you didn't do, you didn't build. I think one of the number one things for people, I, and you can, I don't know, you know, I don't really know, but like, I think the one of the num, one of the important things for somebody who feels like their parent, their father really wasn't there. I mean, at some point, I kind of, I kind of feel like that too, you know, in, at a time in my life. But I think would more so be the, feel like what? the acknowledgement. You feel like what? Like my father, not my stepfather, my bio father, like. Almost like he, uh, not abandoned us, but just like didn't care to be there. Right, right. It was more so choosing what he wanted rather than his children. Right. And I feel like people who go through that feel like, the, I feel like one of the big things that they really desire is that acknowledgement. acknowledgement. And that's why acknowledge I appreciated me, you know? uh, Shannon Sharp. I was listening to his podcast when he was like, look, I was a bad father. Like he told his daughters that like, you know, I thought like just giving y'all stuff and being yeah. able to one day to you know, give you all this and y'all mm-hmm. came back was like, no, dad, we want it. You. you. Yeah. And like that hits you different. Yeah. Because you think you're doing the right. <laughs> you think you're providing the world. Yeah. And they don't care, care. about the world. Mm. It's an added bonus, yeah. Like it's literally just a like, bonus. It's I'm not <laughs> sure I'd rather be sad in a Mercedes Benz. Right. You know, like let's yeah. keep it hundred. I, if I'm a teen, let's just say I was a 16 year old boy, and I, had, you know, I was dealing with issues with my father, and he just gave me money all the time. I would be okay with being sad in the band. Yeah. I mean, you see that a lot on TV. What well, yeah. the rich kid parents never there, like, and they just be really like. I remember watching Sweet sad. 16, <laughs> and this was me when they used to have a Sweet 16 show. Yeah. I was in high school, and I remember looking at my mom. We was watching it together, and she was like. I don't, I don't want to say she felt bad. She couldn't give me a party like that. But I remember she made a comment. And I was like, Mom, them, them kids don't look happy. Like, <laughs> them kids look like they forcing this just to say they got like, They didn't look happy. Yeah. Like, especially the ones whose parents was, like, all over the world yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And so, like, we see it all the time. Like, you can't yep. buy kids. No. And so when I saw, because it was trending today, I think yesterday, even though – what I'm reading now on Twitter, it seems to be that it was fake. Jerry Springer really didn't do this. But the, the commentary around it, some people were like, oh, this is like he, look what he did. Like, yes, you showed him. 
And I'm like, no, you showed them who you picked. You picked your yeah, your they, life, um, your wife, your two and, daughters in the marriage. But mm-hmm. so, they got you, actually. Yeah. We just got your money. We so even expect. if it wasn't true, the situation is very true. Yeah, it's very truthful, and it, it happens, happens a lot. Way it happens on, more, than and you it think. happens on every scale. Yeah, like you don't have to be filthy rich to yep. do it. Like we see people without money still give like their whatever their portion, their our their child portion. support. People yeah. love to do that. Just take the money, and I, they don't see their kid. Like I mean, and I, I literally know people. I tell who do people that. all the time. It's been a lot of nights, a lot of times, the kids been sick. Cutting mm-hmm. up, uh, teething, yeah. potty training, where I would would have given Dominique my entire check in child support <laughs> not to be here. Not to deal with that not stuff. Not to deal with it. Because there's no knock on people who have that. <laughs> if I could exchange money for those nights that I was up <laughs> dealing with teething, I was up holding my son having a seizure, yeah. I was up. You know, like and dealing hospitals. with hospitals. Mm-hmm. Now, like Dom, I I was the one who stayed at the hospital. Mm-hmm. I didn't want my wife at the hospital. I would be like, uh, yeah. You know, I, not that our kids were like sickly. They just, you know, sometimes kids when they're younger, they just they're any just virus prone. that come around, yeah. whatever, they just go crazy. And then you gotta keep in mind, like we had pandemic babies, so yeah. they was inside all the time. Yeah. As soon as they got back in the world, it was whatever. But Great. <laughs> <laughs> More of the story, I would have given my entire check to avoid some of those nights. Yeah. Like Oh my God. Just just even small things like people throwing up, just constant down. Oh, I remember just, this is how I knew I was really a dad. Like I think by journey, she threw up on me once. <laughs> I didn't even care. Like I caught it. Remember I yeah, caught it? Mm-hmm. Because like it's just you become a dad and you just like you just, it's a dad, like, <laughs> yeah, it's like but it's, it's just a reflex. Like, I remember them first, when, especially when Major, them first couple of weeks, yeah, I was ready to just <laughs> run away. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he was very tense. Um, you could tell, you could see it because I was stressed. One, I was worried yeah. about you. Mm-hmm. I was worried, over worried about. He was worried about me. He was worried about the baby. I was because... worried about you know the baby because I'm like every time he coughed. What's wrong with him? Every yeah. time he cried, oh, he why crying, is he crying? He just Every overly time, hungry. <laughs> and what you don't know until you have kids is that they make some of the scariest sound. Like kids, <laughs> babies, newborns, make some of the scariest sounds to do the most simple stuff. Like they'll just be having a little bit of gas and they will cry like, they just got shot like in so much pain, and like as soon as they pass the gas, they're laughing, or yeah. or it will sound like they're choking and about to die and have an asthma attack, and they're just choking on slob and spit, and they're f- perfectly <laughs> fine. They they go cough it up and keep going. Yeah, they, especially like when they used to drink like that. You remember what, I would freak out every time. He would drink from a bottle and sound like he. Oh my god, yes, yeah. especially Journey because you know she didn't like stuff going right. down her throat. And she just was so traumatic. But like, the thing is, my whole point of saying all that is, I would have given my life savings to avoid yeah, some of those, those nights. nights. So, yeah. obviously, while financial support is necessary, mm-hmm. there's more to the story. And that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Whoa. Don't settle for that. What else is a better transition into our next topic? We talk, It's crazy because it's two things we talked about would happen. And we said, we hope it don't happen, but it probably will. Remember <laughs> two, I would say a year and a half ago, we talked about Blueface and Krishan. What did I say? I got to go find, I don't know which podcast. <laughs> what did I say was going to be the next thing they was going to do? Is I said a year and a half ago, because that's when they first were starting to fight. I was like, they going to fight, oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah, going to yeah. do this. Uh-huh. The next thing, boom, baby. Mm-hmm. And, and it's happens. not from I know everything or whatever. It's just the natural progression of, of how toxic stuff goes. Yep. Toxic Always breeds the same. more. To- like, it's just going to get worse. What else can <laughs> yeah it can happen? That's how it be. But I don't want to talk about so that. True, I want to talk about the John Morant situation because I 
think this is another example of why um, being a parent is important. Mm-hmm. Like you can be friendly, but when you're a parent, you have to parent. Yeah, and and parenting um, in different stages of life is will look different. The transition, but like parenting. A it doesn't mean just freedom. A toddler parenting, an a adult, teenager yeah. parenting, an a preteen parenting, mm-hmm. a college student parenting. You you're gonna parent hard, mm-hmm. technically until they get married and start their own family. Yeah, but then like so, even then you're still gonna be like that. But you still need to be guided. Like yeah. you still need to be a counselor. The only uh, thing that changes when you get when they're an adult is they don't have to listen to you. Right. But you can still tell them stuff. Because you you know, they don't need not they don't need you, but they, they don't have to. Because they have, they have a right not they to listen to you. Take what you say and choose whether they Yeah. But they're grown. you as a parent shouldn't change. Right. Just because they're grown out. Like, like you shouldn't be like, oh well, you do whatever you want. We're friends out. Yeah. Like, what? no, I don't like that. So like when I see John Morant making these <laughs> These terrible decisions. And let me be 100% clear. Jabba Rent is not doing anything illegal. Right. I don't know why people keep saying he has a Second Amendment right. No law enforcement agency. For real. Nobody has pressed charges. Nobody has called to take his weapons. <laughs> for nobody real. is calling for criminal or civil charges. Right. However, his employer, yes. the NBA, is saying, hey, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> this is hurting the brand of one of our star workers. Let me give us give you all an example. Mm-hmm. If you worked for, and I know this because I worked there, Target. When we got hired at Target, they mm-hmm. told us, when you walk out these doors, take off anything related to Target. If you go into a bar or if you're going somewhere because... That's going to hurt our brand. We don't mm-hmm. want to see you on Snapchat at a club, even though it's legal. Right. We don't want to see you out drinking and stuff with our company's stuff. brand yeah. on. Now, is drinking illegal? No. Is partying illegal? No. These are not illegal activities, but the company is saying, hey, it's take it, take off our stuff. brand when <laughs> you do that. After hours, take off the clothes. I know I had friends who worked at certain, um, they were like waitress staff. They would put on jackets and stuff afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, cover brand. You know what I'm saying? Like, employers have a right to say what they want their employees to do. You signed. So, we're not, (laughs) nobody is saying John Moran is committing a crime. We are saying he is committing a policy violation for right. the place he works at that happens to pay him a lot of money. And 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 we low key agree with the the policy because um, and and every job has policies. And this is not the first time. And it's not. You right. Is the, and this is the issue I have because people saying y'all y'all just y'all don't know y'all y'all was 23 y'all ain't have That's correct. It's some, I'm glad. Me too. I, I didn't put, but one, what I'm going to say this, I had enough sense not to put everything on social media because mm. I didn't need oh, that yes. validation. For real. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm thugging. I'm this or that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I not didn't doing need it. to put that mm-mm. on. I, that, that didn't, that does nothing for me. <laughs> yeah, mm-mm. Don't what, put me on there. <laughs> what I did do though is I made good and sure I didn't make the same mistake twice. Like for <laughs> example, if I worked at Starbucks, right, mm-hmm. and I got in trouble for a policy violation, they mm-hmm. came and they was like, look, we're going to suspend you, which they did to John Morant. Mm-hmm. Go, you know, take your bonus because he lost $40 million. Wow. <laughs> I would not violate that same policy again two months later. Nope. Because it's just Ignan. like, you I just, don't care what age I am. Yeah. If I get in trouble for something, even when I was a kid, if I got in trouble once, I'm not going to do it again. Right. Like, I might do something else. Right. But I'm not going to do that thing. same thing again. Yeah. Unless there's a problem. I think John Morant has a problem. <laughs> I think. Gotta he, be. I mean, because what else could it be? Whether that's uh, drinking. Whether that's gambling, whether that's I think there's some there is no way somebody can lose or go through what you went through, the public scrutiny, the yeah. the the suspension, yeah. the having to go to the, the rehab for a week or two, to get suspended from 
actual NBA games. Yeah. And to do the same thing after you just said two weeks ago when y'all lost to the Lakers that you are, you know, you you know, you know, realize you had a lot of offseason stuff. You go, this summer you go work on your game. You go leave all that alone. Two weeks later, you're doing, you're doing the, the same stuff. thing. To me, that says he has a deeper problem yeah. that we need to address that problem. Because mm-hmm. he's going to keep doing it. He going to keep doing it. It's going to get to a point where we live in a society, unfortunately, where we've seen... I mean, we've seen, you know, rappers who had that persona. Mm-hmm. They're not here anymore. No, we've seen things happen. To and people. they had a lot of money, too. Yeah. And they're not here anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I just don't want to see that for him. But a part of the problem with, is that I think everybody in his camp, including his father, including his friends, went from support to yes man because now he got all, all the right. money. So whatever Ja want to do, yeah. Let like, Ja do, yeah. Your own Don't father tell him in nothing. the club with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm-mm. what is that? On any level. Come on. On any money level. Like, that's just strange. It's weird. <laughs> I don't care what you say. Strange. <laughs> and so, yeah. I Man. So, yeah. The Ja Morant thing. Let's stay focused. One, nobody's saying that he's a criminal. Right. Nobody's saying he should lose his NBA contract, but I think he's got a deeper problem. Yeah. I feel like it'll come out later, like it was yeah. something that he was dealing with. There's no way, there's no way you, you do the he, same. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry that it don't. Yeah, that don't make sense. It was literally the same thing, right? So briefly on a blue face of Chris Sean, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, yeah, so this is another example, and we kind of just realized this. Yesterday we was watching that. Yeah. Like, what they are, people like to make fun of them for blue facing the girl, mm-hmm. Krishan, I think. Yeah, her name's Krishan. Name? Of the stuff they do, but we saw the video with the parents and we were like, it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I see. This is what, and like, that's what we're trying to say. Like, that's why we do our yeah. podcast about, yeah. That's what, like, Parenting That's why we're is advocates. so important because <laughs> yeah. now that I've seen her parents, I expect nothing less mm-hmm. than what I see. Nothing less. Like, because it makes sense. Like, if you come from, if you're raised in a certain way, in a certain, yeah. <clears throat> I can tell you what the kids will look like. Yep. And I also understand why she stays with Blueface because, oh, yeah. granted, he is better than what i have what i saw her parents doing and better um just in watching her over these years and how they treated her like how he he is more um more of a constant in her life right and i know she knows she can rely on i know he says like he's kind of exposed himself like some of the messages he tells like i don't want to be with you kill the baby Mm -hmm. all that crazy stuff i know he says that but believe it or not the stuff he's saying, I don't even think it's scratching the surface on some of the stuff she probably heard growing up. Yeah, because her... Yeah, man. And that's the scary part. Her family... That she can find um, safety in, in somebody that. that probably really don't want her like that. But she knows but, she she can count on them. So it's like, yeah, that's... It's sad to see, basically, yeah. and I'm... It's sad to see, but they raised her like that. Like, right. they and created her. It's, and it's not even just about her. I'm saying in general, yeah. parents have to acknowledge or at least know that you are solely responsible for what you made and what they become. Like, yeah. you have, I think parents don't even realize how much of an impact they have on their kids, bro. Even like like even coming from a kid because I obviously we are kids but we we are somebody's kids but even just coming from a kid point of view of even me like whenever I didn't even want to listen to my parents they still those things that they say still like get repeated in my head like I still hear their voices saying those things even though I didn't listen or even though I didn't want to listen like so you're absolutely right the amount of influence a parent has on somebody is. Even- but even subconsciously, it's yeah, stuff that you just do, you hear stuff that you do. Like, yeah, that you saw them doing, and you don't realize it. Yeah, and that's like, true. It's stuff or it's beliefs that you have mm-hmm. that were affirmed. Yeah, based on what you saw or heard. 
Like, for example, your parents, we kind of the same way. <clears throat> we don't, we, our faith in God is personal, mm-hmm. but we both saw our parents not turn away when things got hard or they weren't yeah. two different people. They weren't, you know, yeah. going to church, doing one thing, coming home, doing something else. Yeah. Like, to me, I feel like, especially as a guy, that's why I am the way I am about, I have a positive outlook on churches because I didn't, I saw my mama say one thing in church and do the same thing outside of church. Yeah. That's not everybody's testimony, but it's mine. Yeah. So it's that's why too. I don't yeah. view church like other people. Right. Because some people, especially pe- preachers' kids, saw their parents yeah. preaching and praying, and then as soon as they got home, lived a whole nother life. Yeah. And they grew up crazy. Yeah. Because that's <laughs> nobody, That's confusion. It's confusing. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. So, yeah, I. And and just even in that, just even in our faith, like our parents influence that heavily, you know. And um, like, let's keep it real. You know, people tell us all the time, and we were really in here because I think it's a good, healthy point. <laughs> people tell us all the time, like, hey, thank you for teaching your kid about Jesus. Thank you for, yeah. <laughs> you know, taking y'all kids to church. Thank you for teaching Jesus to them. Yeah. Y'all, I promise you, <laughs> we are not some. <laughs> <laughs> we are not. Why don't you not explain home. it? Yeah, like we don't we are force feed our kids. No, bro. We are now. We have healthy conversations. If they ask questions. If they ask, only when they ask. But we don't force anything. What they have done is, yeah, they have watched us. Yeah, they see. Oh, my dad plays in church. Mm-hmm. He goes to church. My mom. Watches church at home. She, you know, reads, she sings, studies. She, she always, to God, yeah. She at always home. listens to worship music. She at, always, yeah. So behind they closed have doors, picked yeah. up on Jesus, yeah, just on how we live. They have picked up on him also. That is, uh, like they already know about a relationship. Like our eight year old, he right. already is like a believer. Like you know, like yeah, and we don't he, have to. He prays by himself. Sometimes. Yeah, we don't yeah, have yeah. to force it on. Yeah, and then also we don't run from the questions there. Yeah, we don't simply say you don't understand that. Yeah, I feel like that's a cop out. If you can't explain something to a child, you really don't know it. Mm-hmm. So if a child can't ask you a question about your faith mm-hmm. and you can't can't break it down to their level, you probably don't know it. Yeah. Or you probably, which is not a problem because we not. don't know everything. Right. But don't ever shut down a kid for asking a question that makes sense to them. Right. Or even if you don't know, you just be like, hold on, I'm going to figure that out and then I'm going to let you know. I mean, it's been a lot of things that I, my son has asked me and no, I like, paused. Literally, no, literally, and I thought think, about it. <laughs> I, um, I must have been Evan, maybe, maybe the middle child asked <laughs> about a very specific question about Noah's art. And I had to think because I didn't want to just say be quiet, but like, so I really had to go figure it out. Yeah. And the answer and then come back and be like, oh, this, you know, this is probably what happened, you know? Yeah. But even then it's like, man, I need to go figure out that, you know? like Right. I need to, I need be, to go check that out. Seriously. Yeah. So. And it almost like, I don't know, to me, I feel like it makes me want to like keep up with them almost like, yeah. like. But the moral of this and the overarching point is our life is preaching way louder than anything we have to tell them. Our life our life is preaching to them. Yeah. More than our words. Like, for example, me and Dominique, we I won't say we argue a lot. I don't think we argue a lot. We don't now. argue a lot now. Wow, I think, we did though. I don't think most of, and most of our arguments <laughs> right now are petty. Honestly, They're small, are petty and small, but also, I mean, we gotta acknowledge the elephant in the room. Like you're pregnant. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of pregnant arguments we have that, yeah, you know, whatever. But anyway, <laughs> our kids still know, like they know we are a good example of what love is too. Like. They know we love each other. Yeah. They hate that we love each other. Like our kids are jealous. Yeah, they do of not like it. Oh my goodness. Even the little girl. They know that we that 
Our connection is way different than theirs. Yeah, they don't like that. They don't that like that middle it. boy. He he really they does not like, like it. They know that <laughs> it's me, her, then y'all. Yeah, they understand <laughs> our dynamic is us. Like, then them, <laughs> them, and, and it's so gonna once always again, be that. <laughs> when it's time for them to start dating and stuff, those conversations are gonna be a lot easier because they because saw. we don't have to be hypocritical. Yeah, I don't have to tell my sons. Hey, y'all do this, to, but they watch me cheat on their mama. They yeah. not go. They go know everything I'm telling you is exactly how I did your mama. Yeah. She gonna be able to tell Jane, "This is what you look for in a guy. Yeah. This is how this is how guys should treat you, and not have to lie or cover up." Yeah. Oh, but dad beat you and and doing yep. all that. No, they go get they seeing everything we're doing is legit. Like it's we just yeah we're not so perfect, true. but Jesus like. Yeah, we, we actually are trying. Like that's so true because even when people ask me, even just about like business wise and about like the daycare and all that stuff, right? Then about my parents, like why you don't want to take it over? And I'm like, I've saw my my family, my parents build something from nothing, you know. So like they didn't have to tell me go start something go, or find go it you watched it. Yeah, I saw it, so I don't want to just inherit something. I want to do the same thing like i saw the benefits of it i saw the fruit of it and i am intrigued by that so that makes me want to go do my own thing too you know and i it's just kind of hard to explain that to people because they're but like i saw that we saw it and <laughs> it's like why wouldn't you want to go i think we saw it we we, we are blessed to both yeah. have had to you know, it's not common. Like I don't it's, take it's really not. I don't take for <laughs> granted of having a father and a mother. You having a mother and then a stepfather. Mm -hmm. Two really good examples for parents. Like I get that's, true. that's not the testimony of everybody. We yeah. might be the exception. Yeah. Yep. But we not go we not gonna be blessed to have two good parents and then be horrible parents. Right. To our, our own people. kids. And also, if you had Less than ideal parents, you should stop it. Yes, it should stop with you. In the in the so that's why we that's why like this we do this because like man like we have to realize like you can you know marriage we can talk about all this this stuff is important it's real and it has yeah. real life implications. Yeah, for example, a, hurt people hurt people. Mm. If you're in a bad relationship. You might go out. Unfortunately, we live in a world we see people c go kill people and then kill themselves because they was hurt in a relationship. Yeah, we seen what mm. how dangerous these things can be. Yep, we seen like you know the behavior John Morant is exhibiting turns into actual violence in real life. So this stuff is real. Uh, we do our best to. You know, make it a very happy show, but it's real. Like, let's we just have it to be is. honest. We have to have these real conversations. Yeah, and so true. You know, we just do it on our podcast, but I hope that we prompt other people just to have these dialogues. Yeah, and just to think about it. And like, not, yeah, we just hope we plant seeds. Plant seeds. That's it. I'm glad I can plant seeds in you. <laughs> what the hell? Good night, guys. That's a Pill Talk podcast. Oh my God. <laughs> it's the last that's one. A, that's a hard, that's a hard ending. I had to end it. It was over the time. Okay. I just didn't know how to end it hard. Oh man. Oh my <laughs> Go to bed. Yeah, good night. I guys, am man. over it. Yeah. I can't, I already can't breathe. <laughs>